Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. Um, before we launch into our subject, one or two announcements. Number one, Brethren Theological Institute now has classes in Hindi, Malayalam, English. <coughs> Hindi we have on Sunday, which is slightly light, mostly Bible exposition. Monday, we have real serious studies. And these days, Dr. Sanishurian is covering tribulation. Tuesdays, we have English. And Lord willing, from tomorrow, we launch Hindi once again. This is uh, in conjunction with Gospel Hall. And uh, the classes will be slightly heavy. I invite everyone who understands Hindi to join them. And tomorrow, Lord willing, in Hindi, we will start Bibliology, Bible and Bibliology. That is the first announcement. The second one, I have been mentioning many resources here, but because of a number of reasons, I have not been able to post information about those resources. One of them was about a book on Trinity, the best non-technical book and all what you need is only non-technical book the best non-technical book on trinity is by t john matthew and the title of the book is triune god i mentioned this book but to find it out from the library took a little time by tomorrow evening lord willing i will publish a scan of the book scan means scan of the title and also uh, payment information so that those of you who are interested in the, this book might order your own copies also very soon the free electronic books produced by dr sanishrian and i that will also be made available and uh, lord willing that book will also become available in print edition very soon Today, we continue our study of justification by faith. But before uh, I go, uh, I go uh, proceed, one more announcement. Uh, and that is uh, mainly because of net problems. If Brother Jason from Nagpur is hearing me, please be ready for closing prayer. I am announcing in advance so that if there is any problem in net so that you can log in once again by any chance if our brother from nagpur is unable at that time due to net cutoff or anything i remind brother matthews from kalamashiri assembly to be ready these days uh, monsoon is very active and therefore such a precaution has become essential last week we started a study of justification by faith and today let us start an exposition of that doctrine and we start it with romans chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 romans chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 and please remember every believer should memorize these verses and they should also make their children to memorize the verses go this way therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ by whom also we have access by faith into the grace 
wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. These two verses together, they are a long portion. Do not worry about that. Our concern right now is only with therefore being justified by faith. The rest of the verse also or the verses also, Lord willing, we will cover. But at present, our main focus is on therefore being justified by faith. Last week, I gave a substantial background and made it very clear that justification and forgiveness of sins is not one and the same thing. When a person commits a sin or an iniquity or when a person makes an error intentionally or unintentionally, then a competent authority can handle it either by punishing that person or by imposing a fine on that person. Once that fine is paid, he is no longer a trespasser. He is no longer a criminal. Once a person serves his jail sentence, he is no longer a criminal. The person who has paid the penalty, either through a jail sentence or through a fine, is now a former offender. Please remember that. He is a former offender, not a forgiven one. A former offender who has paid the penalty either through a fine or through a jail sentence. But... Suppose if there is a competent person who says, I forgive you, then he is not only a former offender, he is also a forgiven offender. For example, you all know about uh, that missionary in Orissa who was burnt to death with two of his children. Finally, when matters came to his family, his family made it very clear that they forgive him. He committed the crime against God, the nation and the family. And out of these three, the family decided to forgive him. So for the family, he is a forgiven offender. For the law, he is not forgiven offender. The law does not forgive. The law punishes. So the offender was punished. And as I know, he is out of jail after the punishment was over or something like that. And he is a former offender. But a former offender or a forgiven offender is not a justified person because justification means when a competent authority declares that a person is not an offender. Declaring a person a forgiven offender or a Former offender is different from declaring that he is not a sinner. And please remember, a person who is a sinner can never, never, never be declared as sinless. Or the correct word would be as righteous. Righteous means a person who is not an offender. Even God cannot directly declare a forgiven sinner as justified. When we go to the cross and when we accept Lord Jesus as our personal savior, God forgives us. That's not justification. And God cannot declare us as justified. We are forgiven sinners. So how can God declare us as justified or people who are not sinners. But that is God's ultimate aim. And because of that, God finds a way to justify us. And that is justification by, uh, by faith. And we are going into details of that. But there is a barrier. Particularly when man tries to be justified in, in the eyes of God. And the biggest barrier is our own sinfulness. Isaiah 64, 6. Isaiah 64, 6 says, but we all are 
but we are all as unclean things and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away so all our righteousness in front of god are as filthy rags so suppose a person spends all his life as an ascetic a man who has renounced everything as a sannyasi and suppose he spends all his life as an ascetic standing on one foot going around without any clothes or anything like that i i had given you examples of sannyasis who had raised their hands and which had become useless once in uh, uh, malayalam classes i mentioned a sannyasi all from gwalior my hometown who had hung his tongue out and he would not drink any he would not take any solid food and the tongue which was hung that way without moving for many years had become frozen he was unable to talk he was unable to eat and for these people all of these things were works of righteousness now suppose one of them comes to lord jesus accepts lord jesus as his or her savior he is forgiven now using their works can god declare them as righteous the answer is no two reasons are there number one all our righteousness is like filthy rags to god and therefore all what they did is like filthy rags so god cannot use it and number two a person who is a forgiven sinner he cannot be declared as righteous anyway he can be declared only as a forgiven sinner so that is a problem and I, i'll mention a few verses please keep them in mind and please note them into your diaries the scripture in romans 3:10 also reminds us that no human being is righteous the scripture in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 declares that the unrighteous cannot inherit god's kingdom so forgiveness of sins is not sufficient please remember when we study actually our dispensations in great detail when we study eschatology in great detail and when we study the standing of a believer the state of a believer and the future of a believer when we study all these things it becomes very very clear that the unrighteous cannot inherit god's kingdom forgiven sinners also are only on their first step many more things have to take place before they become ready to inherit god's kingdom unfortunately though the gospel of salvation by grace through faith is declared very often in our churches evangelical and conservative churches unfortunately the other aspects are overlooked and one of them is this that salvation is only the first step and god has to do many many more things for us to make us worthy to inherit god's kingdom first corinthians 6:9 very clearly says unrighteous cannot inherit it how do how does it happen actually hints about exactly how sinful mankind and forgiven sin sinners can be justified these things are scattered in many places in new testament i have gathered a few of them for teaching in this class but please remember this is not a residential bible school in a residential bible school probably all these verses would be listed to students or they would be asked to go to a such and such textbook and read for them or pick up a concordance and find out for themselves i am mentioning or i am listing only a few sample verses 
so the scripture says that god will give us his righteousness apart from our works because our works are like filthy rags god the very god him himself will give his righteousness to us as a gift if we believe in him we find this in romans chapter 4 verse 6 you might notice that there is an abundance of references from romans there is a reason among all the epistles which god the holy spirit gave to new testament church romans has a very heavy focus on justification by faith and in fact the protestant reformation started when one scholar one monk one roman catholic monk kept on studying romans he kept on studying him and this phrase justification 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 repeatedly impinged upon his mind but he was not able to get a breakthrough and therefore he kept on reading and finally one day he realized that justification is by faith he understood the mechanism of exactly how god does it and that was the birth of the protestant movement this monk roman catholic monk was martin luther who finally wrote 95 statements known as 95 theses and nailed it nailed it to the door of his his mother church lot of things happened after that but that was the uh, when he understood this verse that was the beginning of protestant movement and when he nailed it that was the visible beginning of the protestant movement romans chapter 4 verse 6 says even as david also describes the blessedness of the man unto whom god imputes righteousness without works one thing is clear justification by faith is a divine practice available both in the new testament as well as in the old testament the exact mechanism of how god did it in the old testament that is described in many places in the old testament including uh, this quotation from david which has been taken but also in many verses in the last one third of the book of isaiah and also in many other prophetical books but our main focus in these classes is on justification by faith during new testament era and for new testament era we understand this much that god imputes righteousness without works in other words our works are not taken into consideration because they are like filthy rags even believing and accepting lord jesus as our savior that is not a work belief has no merit it is not a work belief is a non meritorious activity so by a non meritorious activity when we believe in lord jesus when we accept him as our personal savior god gives us forgiveness of sins and then romans 4:6 says he imputes righteousness not our works our works are like filthy rags what is the meaning of imputing imputing means considering or moving something into our account suppose my billionaire uncle dies and the billionaire uncle leaves his billions to me 
that is something similar to imputing the moment he writes his will his property worth billions is mine when i say my billionaire uncle uh, don't start making phone calls whether i'll be able to make a donation for your ministry i have no billionaire uncle and my billionaire uncle is a figurative usage in english language and i used it strictly figuratively okay the moment he writes his will and says that all what belongs to him the billions they belong to me he has made all of that my property and therefore positionally from the moment he writes his will positionally i am a billionaire but i get it only when he dies that means if that's the way he writes his will then i get it only when he dies in the same way god has imputed righteousness unto us whose righteousness what kind of righteousness that the scripture makes clear in other passages and therefore my dear brothers and sisters please understand that god's righteousness that god has imputed righteousness to us our works were not involved and that is why it is called justification by faith when righteousness is imputed that person is righteous and he is justified because if a person is righteous he is not a sinner and he is justified so righteousness justification imputation they are all linked with each other as we move further things will become more clear romans chapter 5 verse 1 says therefore being justified by faith once again when we believe in lord jesus christ god forgives us and then he imputes righteousness to us there is a vast difference between transforming us into righteous and imputing righteousness to us once imputed we wait for a transformation but the transformation comes only later once my uncle writes his will and says all what i have belonged to johnson his riches have been imputed to me i am no longer a poor guy and if i have a good standing in society i can even borrow money against it that much is the value of imputation but finally a moment comes when that entire money falls to me and i become a billionaire in the christian life also we who accept lord jesus as our personal savior we have imputed righteousness and once we have imputed righteousness we are righteous and since we are righteous we are justified because a righteous person is not a sinner a righteous person is not even a former sinner a former sinner cannot be called righteous righteous means a person who has absolutely no sin in him romans chapter 5 says we are justified by faith so we become righteousness is imputed to us through faith okay uh we have a peace with god etc we will pick it up later how does god do that how can god do that and how does god do that as we sift and sort through verses in the bible we come across a number of verses which make the subject more clear one of them is first corinthians 6:15 first portion surprisingly this verse is talking about some other verse some other subject but it throws light on how god can impute his righteousness to us first corinthians 6:15 first part says don't you know that your bodies are the members of christ 
actually that chapter goes on to speak about immorality that's not our subject we want to consider this fragment don't you know that your bodies are members of christ what does it mean this is a reminder that at the moment that we accepted lord jesus as our savior god the holy spirit took us and united us with the body of christ so that we are members of christ once we are made members of christ many many more things take place there as i have reminded many times at the moment of salvation we think only of forgiveness and everlasting life but at the moment of our salvation more than 40 things take place and lord willing some day we will be able to cover all those 40 things in a very systematic study so all these 40 things that takes take place simultaneously but chronologically there is a difference please remember before forgiving us we cannot be united with the body of christ so there is a chronology forgiveness first uniting with the body of christ justification after but though there is chronology in god's will all of it takes place in a moment so uh, once we are forgiven we are united with the body of christ and once we are united with the body of christ something takes place romans chapter 4 romans chapter 4 verse 20 to 22 to 25 and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him it's talking about abraham it's now talking about a new testament truth based upon the statement that abraham believed in god and that was counted unto him for righteousness now exactly how it took place in the life of abraham that's an old testament truth uh, we are not going to cover it right now we are going to cover how it takes place in the new testament so abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness and righteousness was imputed to him verse 24 but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up jesus our lord from the dead what does it mean it means when we believe on our lord jesus christ or when we believe on lord jesus as our savior it will be imputed to us how shall it be imputed to us that's made clear in other verses that make it clear that we are united with the body of christ when we put these things together i am picking up only a few sample verses when we put all these things together it becomes very clear that the chronology is something like this and now comes the most important thing a person a sinner goes to lord jesus he asks forgiveness he is forgiven instantly then according to romans chapter uh, according to first corinthians chapter 12 god the holy spirit takes that forgiven person and unites him with the body of christ and that union with the body of christ is mentioned in many 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 places in the new testament once we are united with the body of christ a number of things take place one of them is we share a lot of things which christ has we cannot be eternal like him eternal means no beginning no end we cannot be eternal like him but we share his everlasting life we cannot be omnipotent like him but we get his grace in our lives when omnipotence helps us solve our problems 
so when we are united with christ we share many things we also share his sonship we are now children of god in the same way when we are united with christ his righteousness is imputed to us the righteousness of christ is imputed to us and once the righteousness of christ is imputed to us that righteousness covers us and when god looks us looks at us he sees us not as former sinners he sees us as people covered in the righteousness of christ and since he views us as people covered in the righteousness of christ he declares that we are not sinners we are righteous we are justified that is justification by faith i'll repeat it once again i'll repeat it chronologically though all these things ta take place simultaneously yet the chronology should be clear to us a sinner goes to god asks forgiveness he is forgiven now he is a forgiven sinner then god the holy spirit takes that person and unites him with the body of christ and now he is the body of christ and therefore he becomes a son of god he becomes brother of lord jesus that is why lord jesus calls new testament era believers as his brothers we share a number of things because of our union with christ including everlasting life and very soon we will also have glorified body not now but very soon and when we are united with christ one of the things which happens is since we are united with christ his righteousness the righteousness of god the righteousness of christ is imputed to us not transferred to us please remember his righteousness is imputed to us and once his righteousness is imputed to us then when god looks at us we are covered in the righteousness of christ and since we are covered in the righteousness of christ god declares that we are righteous and when god declares that we are righteous that is justification since this took place through faith and faith alone this is called justification by faith you may ask brother johnson uh, see this is what he said in romans chapter 4 verses 22 onwards you may ask brother johnson hey why why is it such an important doctrine or why did it become such an important doctrine in uh, which gave rise to the protestant reformation that should also be clear to you to know the significance of this doctrine justification by faith is a fatal doctrine for every group which wants to exploit people every group which wants to exploit people they keep on telling you offer sacrifices i mean bring the money to the church you offer penance bring the money to the church you offer tithes to the church you do this you do this you do this and then you will be justified in fact there was a very crooked guy and if i remember the name correct his name was tretzel a roman catholic extremely cunning priest he said he started selling what is known as certificates for justification just buy this certificate and you are justified this way church was gathering money actually they needed a few millions and he found out this method a lot of people resented but they could not do anything against it
so this was all the background my dear brothers and sisters when god declares a person justified he declares it by faith and somehow or other every church which wants to exploit people has to hide it roman catholic church says that if a person has to be justified he has to undergo their seven sacraments if you go to a cult like seventh day or jehovah witness they will say that you have to believe in lord jesus you have to be baptized and then you also have to do works then only you will be justified you go to jesus only they say you have to be baptized in the name of jesus and then you have to do works that teaching is now coming among the brethren also the original pentecostals had a similar teaching present day pentecostal churches they have uh, many many of them though the common man common pentecostals pentecostals don't know it uh, but many pentecostal churches have already revised their doctrines i'll come to that later modern day pentecostal movement which started around 1905 made it very clear that you have to accept lord jesus as your personal savior and then you have to tarry and you have to tarry and obtain the holy spirit through your effort please remember through your effort and so many kinds of uh, programs were invented to obtain the holy spirit via tarrying and when you obtain the holy spirit through tarrying or tarrying meeting then only you will be saved or justified so that was original pentecostal doctrine was again um something against justification by faith but assemblies of god ag was the first pentecostal church which completely revised that statement in their statement of faith and now one by one many many pentecostal churches have started revising it but unfortunately common man and pastors they don't see these statements of faith and therefore they keep on teaching that you have to accept lord jesus as your as your savior and then you have to tarry and obtain the second blessing not that you get it by grace you have to tarry and get it for that fasting is prescribed a lot of things are prescribed i even had a book in my collection written by one mr styles where he teaches people how to speak in tongues he says you hang your tongue like a dog and repeat any word endless number of times this is all faith plus works the scripture makes it very clear that it is faith plus nothing else all the cults teach faith plus works they are robbing people of the doctrine that it is faith and faith alone and nothing else in the last 25 years many brethren people also have started teaching that i know of a number of brethren people who say you have to accept lord jesus christ and then you have to do this 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 then only will you be saved that is a complete violence with the doctrine of justification by faith the scripture is very 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 clear that we are justified only by faith and the chronology let me tell you once again the chronology is like this a sinner goes to lord jesus accepts him as his savior asks for forgiveness access accepts him as his savior he is forgiven the moment he is forgiven god the holy spirit takes him and unites him with the body of christ and the moment he is united with the body of christ he becomes one body with christ and therefore 
he shares a lot of things which Christ has, such as sonship, such as everlasting life, and many other things. One of those things is the righteousness of Christ. That righteousness is not transferred to us. Please remember, righteousness of Christ is not transferred to us. Rather, it is imputed to us. Imputed means it is considered as part of ours. Malayalam has a good expression for that. Kanak aka pedaga. Yesus Kristu inda niidi, nama da niidi ayat kanak aka pedunu. Aduh nalga pedaga allah, nama kat nalga pedaga allah kanak aka pedun. So the just the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us. It is considered as our righteousness. And that righteousness covers us. When God looks at us, he sees us behind that cover. And therefore, he considers us as righteous. Since he considers us as righteous, we are not sinners. We are not even forgiven sinners. We are righteous. And therefore, we are justified. That is the doctrine of justification by faith. And Romans chapter 5 says that being justified by faith, we have access to God. Uh, actually, King James Bible says we have peace with God. That is uh, Old English. And in Old English, the word peace meant access. For a sinner, even for a forgiven sinner, to have access to God is a, not an easy thing. But when we are covered with the righteousness of Christ, when his righteousness is imputed to us, we have access to God. And therefore, I want to remind you, we New Testament believers, every generation of believers had access to God, but New Testament believers have an access which is unique because we are covered with the righteousness of Christ. We are justified by faith. But the story doesn't stop there. Please remember, the story doesn't stop. Justification has three stages. This justification by faith is only the first stage where righteousness is not given to us or transferred to us, but rather imputed to us. It is considered as part of our account. And therefore, the best phrase to describe it is positional righteousness. In other words, in position, not in experience, in position, in front of God, our position is that of a justified person. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and other verses that I read today, they are all talking about positional justification. You may ask, is there any other kind of justification? Yes, there are other kinds of justifications also. Lord willing, we will look at them in our next class and we will close our discussion on the justification of faith. So please remember, God has made us positionally justified. Today, when we stand in front of God, we can stand with full confidence that he views us not as forgiven sin, as sinners, but as justified, covered with the righteousness of Christ. What does it mean to us? What are the implications? See, unless we understand the implications of doctrine, our study of doctrines is in vain. And the implications, the implication is the position that has been given to you. It's your responsibility to behave according to that. In history, we have many, many examples of people who forgot to behave according to 
their position. There was this American president who was a little loose in his talk. And one day, when he was going to be interviewed on radio, just before his interview, he gave a mock statement as a mockery, not real. He said, my fellow Americans, somewhat like this, my fellow Americans, I want to declare to all of you, this is your president. I want to declare to all of you that America has declared war against China and within moments we will be invading that nation. That single mockery would have cost the whole world, it would have cost dearly. It would have resulted in third world war because China keeps on monitoring every transmission from USA. They would immediately have launched their bombs, maybe atom bombs. China is very ferocious. Please remember, recently they have started making a bomb site where 200 nuclear bombs are displayed openly. They are no longer hiding their intention. This one mockery by the president of America would have cost everything. Do you know why? Because transmission was on. He did not know that transmission was on. He thought transmission, radio transmission will begin only when his interview starts. But those people who were going to conduct the interview and transmit it, they had already turned the equipment on. They were testing it. And I think it was television. Since they had turned it on and they were testing it, the trans actually whatever anybody spoke there, it was already going into the air. So when as a mockery, he said something, it would have destroyed the whole world. When a person is given a position, even if he or she likes to joke, he or she should be careful not to be loose in their talk. Loose talk can destroy people. It has deep connection with justification by faith. In position, we have been covered with the righteousness of Christ. God views us through the righteousness of Christ. And God wants us to understand that and behave in this world as a righteous person should behave. That means we believers have to exercise great caution in our thought life. Guard your mind with all. Guard your, your heart with all diligence. Guard your mind with all diligence. Why? We have been justified and therefore we have to behave according to the position that is given to us. We have to guard our mind. We have to guard our speech. We have to guard our eyes and we have to guard our actions. And often we fail in all these areas because we forget who we are. Please remember, when a person is trained for a high position, he is told the protocol which he should never break. I know a number of doctors. They have told me, even forget allopathy, even in alternative medicine, doctors are taught to behave in a particular way. Do you know why? They have been given a position and they are expected to behave according to their position. I often get complaint about evangelists that they are not careful about their tongues. Unfortunately, that's true. 
they are supposed to guard their tongues many times they fail to do so but forget them let's talk about me let's talk about you what is the implication of the doctrine of justification by faith the implication is very clear we have been given a position not a human position but a divine position and we have to guard our thought life we have to guard our speech life we have to guard our practical life so that we reflect the life that god expects from a justified person and also the world ex expects from a justified person you may ask world yes though the world doesn't know the doctrine of justification by faith they know one thing we are different and since the, we are different we ought to behave in a different manner my dear brothers and sisters this doctrine was suppressed for hundreds of years because if the church has to exploit you it has to tell you to work but if you are told that you are justified by faith the church will lose all the revenue that it can get from you the priests cannot oppress you or suppress you they cannot exploit you that's why the roman catholic church many other churches and cults hide this doctrine and precisely that is the reason why now many many brethren preachers are also trying to suppress that doctrine so that you are enslaved so that you can be made a slave of their whims and fancies please don't fall into that trap lord willing we will complete our study of justification by faith in our next class dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that dr philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean also please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.